Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and in the 11 minute and 31 second workshop this week, we're going to stay with a plunge saw theme and see how the Parkside stacks up against the Titan from Screwfix. That's coming up next. So, yes, I did a video last week uh, about uh, Little's Parkside plunge saw. It's been a very popular video. Uh, it's uh, one of my uh, I think it's the first video that's gone straight to 100,000 views right off the bat like that, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you've watched that, uh, I know it's brought in a lot of new subscribers as well. If you're new here, well, welcome. And of course, if you're an old hand, then welcome back. Um, I'm going to continue with the Parkside Plunge Saw theme for this week. Uh, uh, I am getting a lot of comments, a lot of questions in the comments about how it compares directly to the Titan Saw from Screwfix stores here in Britain. And I thought I'd just do a quick video comparing and contrasting the two. So we're kind of in a golden age of track saws, of plunge saws right now. Uh, certainly here in Britain, uh, we've got far more options, it seems, at the entry level than our uh, friends across uh, the water do in, in the US. Uh, uh, I used this uh, Titan saw in my first Festival of the Cheap Tool uh, video series, and I was very impressed by how it did for the money, to be honest. I called it a little bit rough and ready, a little bit raucous, but it did the job very well at a, at a real entry-level price. Uh, just to be clear, it's the Titan saw, not the Triton saw, not the orange Australian one. Titan is a brand available here in the UK from a uh, sort of catalogue and trade counter retailer, uh, Screwfix. Uh, Screwfix has a parent company in common with a DIY store called b and and you can sometimes find Titan products there as well. Uh, uh, the little Parkside saw, of course, uh, well known to anybody who's uh, been in a little store, the Parkside brand. Uh, these saws are very similar in terms of specifications, uh, both in terms of weight, they both weigh around about 8 kilos. Uh, both in terms of uh, the amount of noise they generate, the dust collection, which is okay but not stellar. Uh, you can improve that, incidentally, by uh, taping over the blade access hole here. Uh, that and many other hot tips in the track saw workshop series, uh, which I did uh, earlier in the year. Uh, both of these saws are 240 volts only. They have a 1200 watt single speed brushed motor. Uh, this motor turns at around about five, five and a half thousand RPM. Uh, there's no soft start, there's no brake. Uh, they have a 165 mil by 20 mil bore, 24 tooth TCT blade supplied as standard. And both blades are perfectly decent. Uh, if you want a finer cut, then other blades are available. It's the same size blade as the DeWalt and Makita and Triton saws use. So blades are available from them, as well as from all the usual third parties, uh, key blades and fixings, trend, Axminster Freud Pro, all the usual suspects have a blade of this size. Neither saw has a riving knife, so you need to take a little bit of care if you're ripping natural timbers that the kerf doesn't close up and pinch the blade. But otherwise, both saws are extremely capable uh, entry level plunge saws. The Titan does have a couple of special, special speeches. The Titan saw has a couple of special features not available on the little park side. Uh, it has the facility to do a scoring cut, a two and a half mil shallow pass, which is very useful if you're doing, if you're cutting cross grain in higher quality birch ply, for example, or veneered boards. Uh, it has an anti kickback feature, uh, which you can't permanently disengage, uh, which drove me nuts. I would not condone removing a safety feature of any kind. However, I took mine off. Uh, within a couple of days of getting this saw because it was driving me crazy. And it also has a little anti-tipping foot like the Makita saw uh, that prevents the saw tipping over on its side uh, after you've, or before or after you've made uh, a bevel cut. Uh, it doesn't help during the cut, it just stops the saw tipping over. Uh, both saws come with a pair of 700mm rails and a connecting bar which gives you a very useful 1400mm uh, cut. There are no clamps and no bag with either saw. The Titan uh, rails are very similar to the Makita rails. It's a variation on the de facto standard Festool pattern rails, and I'm calling it the sand standard pattern as Festool patented this rail in 1980, and all plunge saws run on Festool rails, even the ones from other manufacturers that have gone their own way in the rail design, like DeWalt and Maffel. The little saw won't fit on Makita rails. That's a little bit unfortunate, because if you do want 
a long single length of rail, then the Makita three metre rail is far and away the best price. I think I paid about £140 for mine when I bought mine. Uh, and unfortunately, the base is just too wide. Uh, the Parkside Saw has remained fairly steady in terms of price. When it was launched about three years ago, it was £60. And now it's risen to a thoroughly, thoroughly intimidating £65. The Titan price, on the other hand, is all over the place. It is currently £105. Last week, when the Parkside Saw became available again, the uh, Titan price came down to £90. I paid £90 for mine. Uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, it was £110 before that. Uh, it's now down to 105 apparently down from 125 I've never seen it at that price. However, you can buy this saw in some B&Q stores, as I mentioned earlier, and B&Q have been discounting this quite heavily, and I've seen it available for around about the £70 marks. Uh, the out-of-the-box experience is very similar on both saws. You will get up and cutting very quickly. If you're new to plunge saws again, I'd recommend you take a look at the Traxor Workshop series uh, because that takes you through from literally opening the box all the way through to trimming the guardrail, splinter guard back, and making your first proper cut. However, as interesting as this is, it's not really cutting to the chase. Which one should you buy? I have no idea, because I'm not you. I'll tell you which one I would buy, though. I would buy the Parkside in a heartbeat. £65 for a full-size, fully functioning plunge saw with a decent blade and two 700mm rails. That is an absolute bargain. Uh, I would buy that. I would join those rails together and I would use it for my cross cuts. If I needed to do a rip cut, then I would move those rails up along the cut carefully and just make a long cut that way. When I've got enough coin together, I'd buy the Evolution SD2800 rail set and that will give you all the bases covered. Oops, I'd also make sure that there's a spare 10 quid in there to upgrade to the Triton blade as well. Uh, if you really, really, really need to do a single rip cut along a full length board in one hit, without moving the rail. Well, I made an eight foot rail in the Traxor Workshop series. Go and have a look at that. It cost me about 20 quid in bits and pieces and a little bit of time, and it works really well. Uh, it is not beyond your means to do this. Uh, I think it is an outstanding saw for the money, and I highly recommend it. Its only problem is that you can't get it all the time. It's only available here in the UK occasionally. So you know what I'd do if I couldn't get one of the Parkside saws? Well, I'd buy the Titan. Uh, again, it's a fantastic saw for the money. It costs you a little bit more, but then that's the price of availability. Again, it comes with a perfectly decent blade and it comes with two 700mm rails. And once again, I'd make sure I had a spare tenor to get a decent Triton blade in there or one of the other third-party blades if you prefer those. I'd save up a little bit and I'd buy the Evolution tracks. And again, you've got all the bases covered. Go in that way, assuming you pay full price on this rather than a knockdown special at B&Q, then you, th that setup with the Titan saw is going to cost you a little bit more. But as I said earlier on, that's the price you pay for availability. Uh, either of these saws are outstanding value for money at either of the price points. And I'm going to leave it there for today. Thank you so much for watching. Now, there'll be more on those Evolution guardrails and that guardrail package in a future video and of course the best way not to miss one of my future videos is to subscribe to the channel and if you do subscribe well it's probably worth hitting that bell and hopefully you'll be notified whenever I put up something new or perhaps whenever YouTube decides to tell you about it because it's a little bit flaky to be perfectly honest I want to give a shout out to all of my Patreon supporters without whose support it would be very hard to keep the lights on here uh, and what do you know there's a link down in the video description below to support me through Patreon uh, uh, and if Patreon isn't your thing well there's also a link where you can make direct donations to the channel and thank you so much to everybody who does just that. There are also links in the video description to the majority of products that have been used in this uh, video and many of those will be affiliate links that's also a way for you to support the channel at no cost to yourselves uh, but that's it for this week thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time take care.